Hello. Welcome to today's lesson. Before I introduce the topic, I'd like to request you kindly subscribe to our channel, Shifting Grades. Continue sharing our links to many people so that they may also be blessed through our teaching. Now, today we are doing a physics lesson and the topic today is pressure. I know the word pressure is not new to anybody. Actually, most of us, we've encountered this word. You've heard people talk of blood pressure. You've heard people talk of pressure in liquids. And pressure has been mentioned and applied in daily lives. I don't know whether you've ever asked yourself, why does it happen that when someone is walking on a wet ground with high yield shoes, then the, the shoes make holes on the ground, unlike when the same person is using flat shoes. Or else, when I place a pin against a board and the pin is very sharp, it penetrates the board, unlike when the pin is blunt. So, some of these observations are going to help us understand the concepts behind pressure. Therefore, when you observe these things generally, you understand that whenever a force is applied on a given area, then there is an impact or something happens. And that result, which occurs when force acts on a given area, is what we are calling pressure. Therefore, generally, the definition of pressure is force acting perpendicularly perpendicular per unit area per unit area therefore if some force is applied perpendicularly per unit area then pressure is caused and we can abbreviate pressure with capital P and we say that now mathematically pressure can be expressed as force capital F all over A area so that is the definition of pressure we know that force is the unit of force is the Newton capital N and the unit of area is the square meter and therefore the SI units of pressure is Newton per meter squared, which can be expressed as Newton per meter squared. We have other units, other units, which can be used to record pressure, and they include the Pascal, abbreviated as capital P, small letter A. We also have millimeters of mercury we also have centimeters of mercury as units of measuring pressure therefore let me take you back again to the definition of pressure from this mathematical expression of pressure we can observe that pressure is directly proportional to force but inversely proportional to area and therefore we can note this. We can note that pressure is maximum when area is the least. Therefore, if we compare pressure and area, then we can say that for us to get a big value of pressure, then we need to be having a force acting on a very small area. On the contrary, pressure is minimum when area is the largest or the greatest. Therefore, to summarize these two 
knots, we can say that pressure maximum is given by the force which is acting divided by area minimum. And also, we have noted that when pressure is minimum, area is maximum. Area is maximum. When pressure is minimum, area is maximum. Therefore, for a certain force acting on different areas, that force will give us a maximum pressure if it acts on a very small area and a very small pressure if it acts on a large area. To apply this pressure formula, I would like us to have an example on the board. And the example says, the example says that uh, a force of a force of 100 newtons is applied, a force of 100 newtons is applied on an area of 100 centimeter square on an area of 100 centimeter square what is the pressure exerted on the area what is the pressure what is the pressure exerted on the area solution Solution, we know very well that the question is asking about the pressure exerted on the area. And from definition, we know pressure is equal to force all over area. Then, from these instructions, we have a force of 100 newtons acting on an area of 100 centimeters squared. So, the first thing you can do here is... It is good to note that we should be working with SI units. So when you get these values, the first thing you do is to change all the variables to the SI units required. So even if cubic centimeters are units of area, it is not the SI unit in physics. Therefore, we change the 100 centimeters squared into meters squared. And changing, changing 100 centimeters squared into meters squared, it means we will divide by a thousand. We divide by 10,000 centimeters squared so that we may get meters squared. And this is giving us 0 0.01 meters squared when it is converted. Therefore, now, instead of centimeter squared, we are working with area, which is now already in SI units. And now, we can say that our pressure will be given by a force of 100 newtons divided by an area of 0 0.01 square meters. And this gives us 10,000 newtons per meter squared, Newton per meter squared. So that is the pressure caused by a force of 100 Newtons on an area of 100 square centimeters. Let me give another example before we go to pressure in liquids. Another example, we are told we are told that uh, a brick measures 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters. A brick measures 20 by 10 by 5 centimeters. Then we are told it has a mass of 500 grams. The brick has a mass 
of 500 grams. Then we are taught to find part A, the greatest pressure, and part B, the least pressure exerted by the block on the ground by the block on the ground very fast again we go to solution of that question it is good to note that we are having a brick here solution we are having a cuboid here which is measuring 20 by 10 by 5. So these are the dimensions of the brick. Brick is always in cuboid shape. Therefore, it is measuring 20 by 10 and a height of 5. And we are told now this brick is laid on the ground with the different phases which means that it causes different pressures depending on the phase which is in contact with the ground. Therefore, for us to get pressure, part A now, pressure maximum, we need to get the force due to this block, which is a brick, divided by the area which is minimum, according to the formula we had stated earlier. Therefore, we know that force is calculated by mass times gravity according to the topic of forces still in book one. Therefore, we have a mass of 500 which must be divided by 1000 to make them kilograms then times gravitational acceleration which is always 10. Therefore, when you divide this, we get a force of 5 newtons. Therefore, now it is a force of 5 newtons and it is acting on different areas. Therefore, when we check the faces of this brick, we have a face which measures, measures 20 by 10. That is the base and also the top. This side measures 10 by 5. And we have another face with the same dimension. Then we have 20 by 5. Then another face. Therefore, considering the six phases, it is only the face measuring 10 by 5, which will give us the minimum area. So that pressure becomes maximum. Therefore, the area minimum is when we multiply 5 by 10. This is 50 square centimeters. And we can divide by 10,000 again to make them square meters. And when we divide we will get 0 0.005 square meters. Therefore, let me finish the question here. To get pressure maximum, to get pressure maximum, according to that question, pressure maximum, then we will need the force of 5 divided by the minimum area, which is 0 0.005 square meters. And this will give us, let me divide it, 5 divided by 0 0.005. This gives us 1,000 newtons per meter squared as the maximum pressure. For us now to get part B, which is asking the minimum pressure, we got to divide the force due to that box by the area, which is maximum. So that pressure becomes minimum. We got to divide with the biggest area. Therefore, now we will get the force is the same same because the brick has not changed. Only the face on which it is in contact with the ground has changed. But the brick remains with a force of 5 newtons. Divide by area maximum. Therefore, now considering this shape, the biggest area is the base. 
which is 20 by 10, 200, 200 square centimeters. And therefore, the 200 square centimeters can be divided by 10,000 to make them as a unit. Therefore, this becomes 0 0.02 square meters. So, dividing 5 divided by 0 0.02, this gives us 250 newtons per meter squared. 250 newtons per meter squared. Therefore, we have observed that when pressure is minimum, then we go to use area which is largest. And for us to get maximum pressure, then we go to, to divide the force by the smallest area. So that's how we go about pressure in solids. It is good to master that. The concept of pressure being maximum when area is least and the pressure being minimum when area is maximum is applied in some areas like for example we know the the every commercial vehicles are made with extra wheels the excess wheels they are to provide a big area in which the vehicle is in contact with the road and by providing a bigger area in contact with the ground that enables the heavy vehicles to exert the minimum pressure possible otherwise with few wheels the area in contact to the ground would be small and small area in contact to the ground then means a very high pressure to be exerted and that can lead either to the vehicle sticking in the ground or the road being damaged by the high pressure therefore the principle of pressure being minimum when area is high is applied in those every commercial vehicles and we know them therefore that's all about pressure in solids we have seen the formula and we have also seen how we can relate maximum pressure and minimum area minimum pressure and maximum area i'd like us to mention something under pressure in liquids pressure in liquids in liquids <coughs> pressure in liquids let me write it there are a few notes you should be having at the back of your mind as we continue pressure in liquids we should know that pressure in liquids increases with depth you have even done experiments to demonstrate this even in the primary school level. Therefore, we all know that pressure increases with depth. Something else to be discussed later, we should know that pressure also increases with density. Pressure increases with the density. Therefore, the denser a liquid is, then the greater the pressure it will cause. Again, it is important to master that actually this is very important that at the same level pressure in liquids is equal pressure in liquids is equal therefore we should know that as long as the level of liquid is the same then at that level pressure exerted is equal i would like us to demonstrate something and that is the pressure formula in liquids and generally fluids which include both liquids and gases therefore we can look at something which we are calling pressure formula pressure formula in liquids or fluids generally pressure formula in fluids we can consider a cylindrical container a cylindrical container with area a and with a lipid to a height h and uh, 
liquid acid density rho we can consider that a cylindrical container with a cross section area actually this should be a cross section area a with a liquid up to a height of smaller h and the liquid having a density rho we know that the symbol rho is the greek word for density therefore if we now have uh, <clears throat> the container here which is cylindrical and we say that it is occupying a liquid it is occupied by a liquid it is occupied by a liquid up to a height of small letter h and the base the base area is a the base area is a then we can check how we can arrive at the formula of pressure in liquids the first step the first step what we do is we get the volume of the liquid volume of the liquid and we know very well even in the definition of volume in book one under measurement we know that volume is given by cross section area times height so if this liquid is having a height of h and the base of the container is having an area of capital a then the volume of that liquid is calculated by cross section area multiplied by the height of that liquid the next thing we should get is the mass of the liquid mass of the liquid and we know that from this relationship that density is equals to mass of a volume then cross multiplying this gives us mass as density times volume therefore for us to get mass of the liquid we will take the volume which is already calculated times density of the liquid therefore we we'll get the volume times density and the volume already is a h because it is already above times the density of that liquid which is raw that is done now the next thing to get is something called the the, the weight of the liquid weight of the liquid weight is also force and we all know that the force or the weight of a body is given by mass times gravitational acceleration therefore the weight of the liquid will be given by the mass of that liquid and the mass is in the previous step therefore ahg give ah rho gives us the mass times gravitational acceleration therefore the last step now for us to get pressure we apply the definition of pressure and the definition of pressure is force divided by area therefore the force due to this liquid is its own weight and it is h times a times rho times gravity therefore we have a h rho g divided by the area which is still the cross section area of that container and therefore by this step now area simplifies and we will have pressure in liquid being given by h which is the height of the column of that liquid times g which is times rho which is the density of this liquid then g is a constant which is the gravitational acceleration of the earth therefore that is how the pressure formula in liquids is applied at and we can see that pressure is directly proportional to the height or to the column of the liquid and again pressure is directly proportional to rho which is the density of the liquid then we multiply those factors by g which is a constant and it is called the gravitational acceleration of the earth let me give an example on that then uh, we continue 
we are taught a diver is 10 meters below the surface of water. A diver is 10 meters below the surface of water. Below the surface of water. The density of water, if the density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, determine the pressure due to water. Determine the pressure due to water on the diver. On the diver. Solution, very fast. It is good to remember that now this diver is inside a water service and now a water column is acting on him and it is causing some pressure on this person. Therefore, for us to get the pressure, we said that it is H, which is the column of the water, times rho, which is the density of that liquid, then times G, which is the gravitational acceleration, and always a constant. Therefore, according to the question, we are told that the diver is 10 meters below the surface of water. Therefore, H is 10, and the density of fresh water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. 1,000. Then, gravitational acceleration is approximated to be 10. And it has also been provided for the question. Therefore, when you multiply 10 by 1,000 by 10, we get 100,000 newtons per meter squared. You can also write 100,000 pascals. So you can use a different unit unless the examiner has specified you use Newton per meter squared. So that's all about pressure in liquids. We are going to be looking at some applications of the same and also we'll be looking at transmission of pressure in fluids in the next lesson. Thank you for listening to us. Kindly subscribe to our channel and share our link to others. Thank you.